Hello gorgeous beauties, my name is Dragonflow aka Frank and this is the most beautiful dog in the land, Ozzy, just chilling. So yesterday I released a video on the nine borderline personality disorder criteria, and tonight I'm going to make a much longer video. It's going to be on how these criteria were displayed by my ex-girlfriend in our relationship and what to look out for if you're dating a borderline or maybe you are a borderline and you're not sure. Okay, so fear of abandonment was the first one. Now, in the love bombing phase, which is when a narcissist or a bar borderline just like loves you and affirms you and makes you think that you're the best person in the world, they're also making sure that they latch onto you so that you don't abandon them and you don't leave. Now, one of the big uh, reasons why borderlines experience fear of abandonment is because they usually come from a broken home. And I'm not saying that all of them come from a broken home, but there's a number of them that come from a broken home. In my ex-girlfriend's case, uh, when she was four, her parents separated, and she would go from her mom's house to her dad's house, and there was multiple screaming bouts. Uh, she didn't sleep properly. Uh, she was like always in a state of, uh, of disarray. And so when she got into relationships with people and when she got into a relationship with me, she did everything to latch on and make sure that I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't leave her side. Now, when I was busy and I was working, she felt like I was rejecting her. And in rejecting her, she would, I realized this much later, go have sex with other men in some cases, go have sex with probably women. She gave me uh, big hints that she was bisexual, and at one point she was going to see her uh, friend. And so that's kind of how fear of abandonment was displayed. Once I stopped being interested in her, and she felt like I she knew that the relationship was over, by this point she didn't care about me at all. And then started being clingy to the guy, the new guy that she was with. And so the cycle kind of started all over, where she expressed her fear of abandonment covertly with him by always calling him, always affirming him, always telling him he was the best, etc., etc. How do I know this? Because we have common friends, and somebody told me this the other night, which is actually why I started talking about uh, borderline personality disorders again. Now, unstable relationships. That's number two. So... This girl, I was led to believe, was just down on her luck and really kind of, you know, guys were just mean to her and she was an innocent bystander, etc., etc. But as we were talking, I realized, and she also hinted, that she was very unfaithful on multiple occasions to all of her boyfriends and I'm sure to me as well. So... In this case, it's like one of her relationships lasted for years, but they were breaking up every three months. There was violence in the relationship. They would leave each other, get back together, cheat on each other, get back together. And then it finally ended by a screaming bout in the middle of the street with him, uh, with him smashing her face against the wall. Which is unfortunately, a man shouldn't beat a woman, but when... There's screaming and yelling, people lose their stuff, and especially if the, the guy you're with is emotionally unstable, violence may ensue. In my case, violence didn't ensue, so I'm very, very happy and very lucky for that. But be careful on both sides. If you're dating a borderline, be careful not to hit them if they lose their temper. And if you are a borderline, make sure to control your temper because you never know who you're going to deal with. Uh, so in, in closing that unstable relationships, they're unstable because a little bit, like I said before, there's all this love bombing and then you're degraded and then there's a lot of fighting and then there's obviously breakups. So this usually lasts like three, four months, six months. You realize the person's a little bit nutty. They're not for you. You realize that you're going to lose your temper with this person at any given moment. And so you're like, okay. Gotta, gotta get out of this. Now, the third one. Unclear or shifting self-image. Now, my ex-girlfriend was clearly a party girl. She loved to party, she loved to do drugs, and she loved to drink. I don't know that it's the case with all borderlines, but there's a lot of borderlines that need some 
some distractions, and that's why they lean in on drugs and alcohol to give them that distractions. So how is this relative to an unclear self unclear or shifting self-image? Well, I'm a fitness buff. I love to go to the gym. I love to eat well. I love to sleep early. Uh, I really take care of my fitness as much as I could. Now, when she started dating me, she fell into this vibe. So she started to sleep early. She started to train a lot. She started to eat a lot. And then in my head, I was like, okay, you know, this, this girl really was down on her luck with some of the guys she was dating. And she really is trying to make like improvements in her, in her life. But as soon as she started working again, she started working at a bar, she started drinking right away. Now, why did she start drinking right away? Number one, because it's, it's, it was in her nature to begin with. And number two, the new people that she was staying with were alcoholics. And unfortunately, they were drug addicts as well. So she started doing cocaine right away. She started drinking right away. And so for me, this proved that she only was a certain way to humor me and to make sure that I kind of uh, acknowledged her in the relationship. The minute the relationship was over, that all broke down because she wasn't that. I would even go as far as saying that while I was seeing her, she started reading and this girl never read. And as soon as we broke up, she never read again, I'm sure. So the next one, impulsive self-destructive behavior. Well, obviously, I just mentioned she, she drank a lot of alcohol when she started working at the bar again. I found two uh, eight ball baggies of cocaine in my house after she left that belonged to her. And a lot of times she would come home like her eyes were glazy, she smelled of alcohol, you could tell she had partied a lot. So just that in itself is self-destructive behavior. Not only will they do stuff like that, they will also kind of... Uh, I. You know, if you have a couple of tattoos, it's not a big deal. But if you start tattooing your whole body, it's a bit of a self-destructive behavior in a sense. And one of the reasons it's a self-destructive behavior is because you're kind of like, you're, you're imprinting all kinds of stuff on your body that wasn't meant to be there. Now, again, if you have a few tattoos, it's not a big deal. But why I'm mentioning it as a self-destructive behavior is because borderlines tend to be stuck in their head. There's a lot of anxiety. So in order to get rid of that, that's why they get tattoos. So like the needle gets them out of their head and makes them think about the piercing and the needle going through. So this is also one of the reasons why some borderlines tend to cut or slice themselves, slice their arms or slice their legs. As I mentioned in other videos, I've met a few borderline girls that, that do this. It's to take off the edge. It's not necessarily a suicidal tactic. It's to take off the edge. But in taking off the edge, they do a lot of self-destructive stuff. So my ex-girlfriend used to come home drunk. One night she's like, I don't want to tell you, but I have to tell you. And this was the first night I kind of knew we were going down a slippery slope. I'm like, what? She goes, I did cocaine tonight. I'm like, well, that's awesome. So anyways, be careful if the person's doing a lot of drugs, drinking a lot, has a lot of tattoos has a lot of weird tattoos, Have a lot. has a lot of tattoos in weird places. And just like, again, I'm not being judgmental to people with tattoos, but in girls, it's something to uh, look out for. So fourth one, impulsive, self, self-destructive, oh, sorry. Fifth one, self-harm. So, I mean, self-harm and impulsive, self-destructive behaviors kind of go hand in hand, so I don't have to tell you that. Uh, there was a lot of drinking, there was a lot of drugs, there was a lot of not sleeping properly, there was a lot, a lot of not eating properly. She used to eat a lot of junk food. And pretty much as soon as she started working, as soon as she started dating me, she stopped working. So this also relates into self-harm or impulsive self-destructive behaviors. It's like adults need to work to pay their stuff unless you have enough money to stay home and do nothing. So it's just like in the self-harm, she would make a lot of debts. Uh, she would buy things that with money she didn't have. She actually went and buy the dog when she was already six, seven thousand dollars in debt on her credit card. The, the dog set her back two thousand dollars. So it's just like don't necessarily look for self-harm as just suicidal behavior or as they're cutting themselves or as drinking. Look at self-harm also in a way that's creating a scenario where they will be financially destitute and not well off 
off into the future. Uh, number six, extreme emotional swings. There was definitely extreme emotional swings. So one day I was in her car and everything was amazing. And suddenly she started screaming at me because I wore a Spider-Man shirt. And I was like, I was going to start screaming back. So I was like, I better leave the car. So then I come home and I'm like kind of trying to air out the situation. So I come home, she comes home, she starts screaming at me some more. So I'm like, okay, now she doesn't want to stop. And then once we had the screaming bout, she was like, she was all nice again. She's like, please roll me this joint. And she was all cool. And it was like nothing happened. And then the next day again, something happened. She starts screaming again. And then, oh, come shopping with me. Like nothing happened. So watch out for that. Watch if the person is like super nice, super not nice, super nice, super not nice. Love bombing, not love bombing. These things kind of go hand in hand. Okay, chronic feeling of emptiness. So they say that borderline people with borderline personality disorder don't really have uh, an enormous uh, sense of self, okay? So they're not really sure who they are. They're not really like locked into their character. You say, you know, like this person loves this. This person jokes like this. This person likes these kinds of things. This person likes these kinds of people. They're not locked into that. It's just like there's always a chronic feeling of emptiness because they don't know who their character is. Also, there's this chronic feeling of emptiness probably due to the fact that they had an unstable childhood, their support system is weak, and because they have this kind of mental illness moving forward, people sort of ignore them or repel them away. So this also creates a certain feeling of emptiness. So I remember when I threw her out, because I had to throw her out, the, the, the house was getting chaotic. Her parents didn't, no one was like, okay, come stay with us. We'll help you out. It was like, okay, he threw you out. Now take care of your own problems because you do crazy things and you're crazy. So we're not going to help you. So obviously this leaves like for a lot of this, this creates a lot of feelings of emptiness when you're, you know that you have like a mental illness or maybe you're not 100% sure that you have a mental illness, illness, but you know that you're different and people are repelling you because of it. And in that way, I sympathize for both my ex-girlfriend and people with borderline personality disorder. It's like you do things that are so odd to the common person that when you need empathy, they're not there to give you empathy because you kind of repel them away. So the feelings of emptiness in this case happen because you're doing stuff that's like a little bit socially uh, unacceptable. And also the people in your life aren't there to back you up. So normally families there to, should be there to back you up through thick and thin, even though you're going through certain things. And a lot of this with borderline personality disorder, I noticed with my ex-girlfriend, it's like her family wasn't there for her. She was easy to kind of toss out to the side because she would do weird stuff. And uh, that was pretty much it. It's, it's just like you have these feelings of emptiness because you don't have a support system. Your mind is con in a constant influx. You're in a constant battle in your head all the time. And the people that you deal with tend to start to repel you because they can't deal with your mood swings and the stuff that you do as a process, as a byproduct of being yourself. Uh, next one, explosive anger. So explosive anger and extreme emotional mood swings sort of go together. Okay, so extreme emotional mood swings, it's more like depression, happiness, sadness, anger, etc. I get it. But explosive anger, it's really like the house will be a chaos of screaming. So one night, I remember she brought up that I was dating kind of this black girl in the past and she said some really rude, racist, derogatory remarks and I gave her a look and next thing we knew, she was holding a chair at me screaming. So it gets really, really bad. So watch out for that. Again, if you're borderline, watch out for that. You don't piss off the wrong person. And if you're at the opposite end of that, watch out that you yourself don't lose it and get violent. It was very violent in my house and very vile. Last one, feeling of suspicion or out of touch with reality. So my ex-girlfriend would constantly start jobs and then want to quit her jobs. But it was kind of funny, even though like she was lazy and didn't want to work, the, the catalyst for her being fired was always like, 
they're talking bad about me. They're not on my side. I know they're talking bad about me. I saw them looking at me crooked. That girl looked at me crooked. That guy did this today. He kind of, I don't trust him. So they get out of things with their feelings of suspicion in a sense. So they create like feelings of suspicion, which kind of brings them back to where they want to be anyways, which is like, let's say, not working or with the wrong guys or in the wrong situations, etc., etc. So anyways, I said a lot of things. This video maybe has a lot to unpack. If you have any questions, commentary, please uh, write me, text me, uh, like and follow and subscribe. And just watch out if you get into a relationship with a borderline person. And uh, that's it. Namaste.